how are you? I hope you're doing well today. Happy Saturday. I'm Deborah. This is Purush Intuitive, and we're going to be looking at the collective energy for the day. So I hope you're doing well. I hope you made it through the first week of January. Uh, you know, it's been um, interesting. It's, you know, we're in this space of really kind of like cleaning up releasing letting go of the past 2023 the residual etc so things can feel a little bit heavy i feel that's the general consensus either you're just needing a lot of sleep a lot of rest feeling exhausted um or you know there's still some annoying and tense aspects in the day-to-day -day. that's to be expected Anytime we make change or transition, even if it is just in the calendar year, it does affect us, right? It's part of a cycle. We have to take time to rest and restore, especially after a really busy season, etc. January is so great for kind of that hermit energy. We're in Capricorn season right now, and so a lot of this is about happy birthday. <laughs> if you're celebrating, if you're a Capricorn watching, um, it's a lot about like putting in the work the, in order to achieve. And it's not the most fun energy necessarily, but I feel like when we do it in the right way, it can actually be pretty fluid. So I'm going to start with this energy cleansing. I bless you with pure love and light, pure source energy, pure loving grace. Woohoo. Sorry that. <laughs> uh, I release anything that, that does not serve our highest good, anything blocking any messages in my own heart, mind, soul. And help us just to be open to receive, right? And I think that's what I do really love about Capricorn energy is it is ruled by Saturn. It is about putting in the hard work. And Saturdays, the day that I am filming, it is all about the hard work. Um, you know, and, and it makes a lot of sense. Even if we think about like our weekly schedule, if you're working Monday through Friday, Saturday, Saturday is always the day that you kind of like get stuff done, right? Then Sunday we can rest, we can relax and restore. So, you know, I'm saying that as well. The unconscious is popping out for us. Be really mindful about, um, you know, like I said, there still is some residual coming through. Be mindful about the expectation. Continue to kind of take a more natural, less stressful approach to life. The things that are popping up for us right now are not anything new under the sun. We've been there, done that, we've dealt with it before. And so we kind of know how to handle it if we're not allowing ourselves to get overly emotional about it. The difficulty around this is, you know, it's really effing annoying <laughs> when we keep like running into the same thing over and over and over again. Like been there, done that, I know this energy, whatever. And we can't seem to get it out of our life, out of our energy, etc. And there is a little residual of that happening especially with the sun square to Pluto today. It's also in opposition, or I'm sorry, the moon square to Pluto, and it's also in opposition to um, Jupiter. Essentially just kind of like not loving where we're at, where we've come from. Yeah, these feelings of improbability have been popping up for us a lot as well. I feel like spirit is challenging us. I feel like that's what a lot of this last week has been about. Like I said, it's nothing new under the sun. We we know what we're dealing with. We know how to navigate. We might not like it. It might be annoying. It might be painful. It might be a lot of different things, right? But it's also this test, like I was saying, to be able to rise above and overcome. 
while we're in the process of this, we're also being challenged with, do we believe? Do we believe we deserve this? Do we believe that we can take a hold of this and actually make something happen from it? I'm getting like heavy confirmation on that energy. This is about tapping into the way we feel. So what I love about Abraham Hicks is they talk about how our emotions are our guidance system. Abraham Hicks is a law of attraction series. It's pretty awesome. I highly recommend you looking at it if you're into that thing. But it really just talks about how our emotions are there to show us whether it's like a good thing or not, <laughs> right? If it's making us feel exhausted, drained, worthless, um, questioning our value, etc., it does need to be looked at. And right now, Saturn and Neptune are in Pisces. They're on the opposite ends of the zo of the uh, degrees, but the beauty of it is Saturn is saying like, okay, tr we're all in this phase collectively where we're being forced to trust our intuition. Trust that intuition. Oh. I was like making sure I just had this thought, dude. Sorry, this is a total side note. I'm so sorry my microphone <laughs> cut off yesterday and I didn't realize until after I had uploaded it. Unfortunately, I was already out of the house. I was working all day and you know, so I did not have the opportunity to re-record. And I think there was like 12 minutes. <laughs> I thought I would just keep it up, but I just had this like sinking feeling that my microphone was not on and it is. <laughs> okay, with that being said. So we're in this energy where Spirit is asking us to trust our intuition, trust our knowing, but at the same time, we're being... <laughs> Sorry about that. For some reason, this message is having a hard time coming out. Okay, Neptune is forcing us to listen to our intuition, but Neptune is like the difference between what is illusion, what is lies, what is deceit, and what is actually authentically true. And we are learning to sift through those energies in our practical world. Is this person telling me the truth? Is this authentically what is happening? Or do I need to listen to my senses that something else is going on? The more we dive into that heart honoring feeling emotion respecting what our emotional guidance system is telling us the more we reawaken the more we re-enliven and you know the reason we're all doing this is we want to be happy we want to be fulfilled we want to enjoy this life that we're living and we're on a good path is what i like yes like i said astrologically there's this residual just annoyance and frustration and that just more comes from the value of things not being in their neat little packages i.e when when we do have to grow when we do have to like overcome certain challenges when we can't let other people's bs yeah the conflict bring us down and the conflict Honestly, the way that Maharishi Ayurveda looks at conflict is it is the root of dynamism. So it is what helps us overcome and evolve because conflict is a window into looking at that something is not working for us. Something isn't right. I was just talking about this with a client the other day and was in a conflict with someone very close to her and it revealed something about this individual that was a little, you know, it didn't feel authentic to her. And so she had to make decisions from there. And I feel like it's very much that situation is mirroring a lot of what we're going through right now and being able to like us. I, I keep hearing that point. So I want to reiterate it making sure that you're scrutinizing if you're already having red flags about someone if there's already something that's like this just doesn't feel right it doesn't seem right etc really listen to that and be cognizant of that when you have conversations oftentimes 
people oh. will reveal themselves pretty blatantly, you know, when we talk to them. Not like you have to do any investigation, but really what this is about is this is about you being able to like overcome your own limitations, trusting your own self, your own instincts. We've been putting a lot of energy emphasis into what other people are telling us to do, how we should act, how we should behave, etc. And it makes us feel like, meh, you know, like we're not going to be able to do that thing. It can be difficult when we're in this energy of transition. Six of Swords, movement from one phase to the next. What I love about that message for you is it's moving on to calmer waters. 333 is on the clock. I'm hearing this is a lot about you're making choices to engage with people, places, and things that fit for you a lot better, that honor your energy. However, you still have to go out and find this is what I'm feeling. I feel like spirit is preparing it for you. I don't think this is about like adding an extra thing to your plate, but I would, you know, put yourself in some new situations today or over this next week, you know, sign up for a class you're interested in taking. Um, I don't know, experience something new, go to a new restaurant, a gallery opening, something that interests you, you know, because when we close ourselves, when we hold ourselves off, when we're reminiscing constantly about the past, or we have a bunch of distractions in place, we end up taking advantage of the opportunities that are really waiting to come in for us. And that's where we start feeling this underlying energy of improbability. And so I feel like there is this call today, okay, like really tune in, tap in, and allow that to reawaken your senses, what you're passionate about. It, it might mean that you have to start from ground zero, um, not saying that in a daunting way, but remember Saturn is all about putting in the work. And oftentimes when we like something or we're passionate about it, in the beginning there is leg work to do, right? But as we get into the flow, we refine, we, come, we become better, stronger, more efficient, more productive, etc. And so that's kind of where spirit is really asking you to take a risk today. Put yourself out there. I think that there is a shift in perspective happening for you. And I don't know. It... It feels fine. <laughs> it feels fine. <laughs> like, I think you're okay. But I think that, you know, there. it's kind of a little bit of a wake-up call is what I'm hearing because there still is this reality about, like, things that need to change or maybe things that need to be done a little bit better or you need to be a little bit more honest with yourself about what you can actually take on. I feel like you are starting to see the fruits of your labor and you might even have someone coming in today that confirms that maybe this is someone from the past maybe this is someone who kind of attaches to this feeling of worthlessness or when you were engaging in the relationship it was at a time that I don't know like I just feel like maybe they're they're making you second guess yourself is what I'm hearing so spirit saying like the more you hermit yourself, it's, <laughs> I don't know, it's a slippery slope. I know we're in January, depending on where you're located, it's the colder months. It's really, not, I love like being all cozy and warm in my house, right? But I feel like here's the underlying theme and message is spirit has what you want. The wheel of fortune is our abundance. I feel like as soon as we put ourselves out there and I'm going to clarify what that practically means. I think you have this really nice opportunity coming in. in excuse me. Whew. It's not... Um, 
uh, like I think there's still some work that needs to be done with this, especially with whatever it is coming in as a night. A night is a really good foundation to start off on because they have some experience, they have some knowledge under their belt, but there still is growth and evolution that is coming in. And Spirit's saying, as soon as you step out, do a little bit of exploration. Number one, this is actually going to uh, remove these feelings of second guessing yourself, second guessing your ability to actually do and make happen. And it's going to make you feel like, I don't know, really excited and really passionate. I feel like Spirit's also saying you're going to be able to like pick up people's energy intentions way easier. It goes back to what I was saying earlier. Have a conversation with someone. It reveals a lot. You know, you'll know where they are on this level of authenticity, how real they're being with you, whether they're you know, just trying to BS you, etc. So I'm seeing this kind of like back and forth um, vibe where we gain some information and then we take it back in to think about it, to kind of mill over it. How can we practically bring it into our life with this Queen of Coins, Coins energy? I think there is this emphasis on, especially collectively as we're evolving, we see it even with technology. Maximum efficiency, minimum effort. There's a lot of opportunities nowadays, right? There's a lot of way to put yourself out there, be passionate about a thing, and really kind of like make money from it. And it's, it's pretty awesome in a lot of ways. And I see that you're unfolding, you're reawakening this passionate desire within you. This doesn't feel like this is something new to you, but it feels like it's something that needed to evolve and i think honestly as i'm saying that i'm hearing that you needed this conflict in order to make that happen sometimes conflicts really force us to be honest with ourselves right what do we want we just have to make sure that we don't let it push us down enough where we go into those spaces of um you know depression anxiety fear limitation when we don't take hold of the opportunities because of it that pretty much that's an easy energy especially with this temperance card especially if we find ourselves as being someone who is very sensitive very in tune with our environment around us we need to find ways to unplug to detach and i'm not saying like quote unquote turn off your gifts turn off your intuition whatever i don't think that's necessarily a good practice we don't want to learn how to shut it down we just want to learn how to manage it, how to support ourselves in that space. And again, tapping into that Saturn in Pisces energy. Here's the thing. We're not, we're going to continue to see people and situations for what they are, whether we like it or not. Um, Pluto is about to re-enter into Aquarius at the end of the month. It went into Aquarius last year, then it's been in retrograde, it moved back into Capricorn, and then it's moving back into Aquarius. This is a really good time to birth our wishes, dreams, desires, where we try to find our fulfillment, right? What is making us happy? What is making us want to live? I love this back to back. So we had womb and then we had birth. Right now, we are in that process of rebirthing something into being. And so that's why collectively spirit is really challenging us to like get clear about what that is for you. You know, do some work. I mean, yes, the problems are always going to be there. People, places and things. Unfortunately, that's the nature of life. We really have to dial into this wisdom and live from a place of our own empowerment. And we have the support to do that because right now, Mercury and Venus in Sagittarius, we want to expand. Like our, in, our inner soul is asking us to do it and figure out ways to be, you know, I don't know, more happy, more fulfilled, try new things, etc. But we have this earth energy that's a 
forcing us to look at where those obstacles are coming into play. And then the water energy is making it really, you know, it's showing us the places that we are emotionally attached to those things. I love this earth energy, really, again, that emphasis. This has been a consistent theme uh, on grounding, right? I, I was talking yesterday, I believe, about what it, you know, um, doing some grounding practices, taking time to meditate, do a breathing technique. Pranayam is dope. It helps unify and find balance and harmony between that masculine and feminine. We really have to take a leap of faith today. And I, I hear it as spirit is calling your passion, your desire. It's calling what you want to see in your life. You got to allow yourself to have it. Number one, right? It's not making. Yes, I think a level of making peace. If it doesn't come, that's appropriate, right? But we also don't want to buy into this belief that it's not going to come, right? Because then we end up taking the opportunities for granted. Where actually maybe honestly truly it's just about like putting yourself out there a little bit and then wham bam boom <laughs> you know something happens that propels you to that next level and that's where taking this leap of faith comes into play try to do something unexpected today guys have a little bit of fun you know not not all work has to be hard work right like sometimes we can have a good time <laughs> it's about the journey you know i know that's such a cliche phrase but it's so true and i think what i found is like tapping into what we need to learn and understand in that moment but knowing that's not the end goal, knowing more is going to unfold. And that's part of the excitement and the magic of life. And when we remain tuned in, grounded in with what we want, what we desire, it helps us take those chances, take those risks, take those opportunities we never thought we would and really kind of end up in a space that is way more heart honoring Um for our heart, for our mind, for our soul. I think I, I talked about that the other day, how success can definitely feel like, oh my gosh, I never thought I would have these amazing things. Test. Spirit totally confirming. I love that. That's like, I mean, it happens. The cards never lie, but we had that same energy yesterday. Actually, you couldn't hear it because the audio dropped out where it was like, you know, the, the same message that we ended with, the, the same card that we ended with was in the very beginning. Spirit is testing you. We have to go through that evaluation. Is this really what we want? Do we have the guts, the balls to go after it? Or are we going to sit in this energy of complaining? about the people, places, and things that just like aren't really honoring our heart, mind, and soul. Spirit, astrologically, it's asking us with Chiron and the North Node in Aries, invest in yourself, invest in who you are, like let your light shine, put in the hard work that shows that you love yourself, right? And that's what this is all about. It's loving ourselves enough to know that we deserve our wildest dreams. <laughs> I'll end with that. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time, your energy, your support to the channel, especially as I get up and running. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> That's my son. He's chomping at the bit to try it again. Lots of love. No, not on the baby boy, okay? Yeah. Lots of love. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Sorry, I just don't want him on there yet. <laughs> I love you. <laughs>